to the Fantasy Footballers DFS Podcast with your hosts, Kyle Borgannoni and Matthew Betts. Hello, DFSers. It's Friday, November 27th, and you woke up from a deep, deep comatose to get ready for the main slate with Borg and Betts. Betts, how's it going? I haven't talked to you, man, in, I don't know, less than 24 hours. <laughs> it's been forever. I don't want to ever go that long again, Kyle, without speaking to you, especially about DFS, which is the best. So, yeah, we recorded this on Wednesday night, of course, the night before Thanksgiving, and I'm just going to put this out there. I'm going to put it in the airwaves. I took down the listener league. I, I won $450 yesterday, so I'm, I'm happy on, on the win on Thanksgiving. I'm putting it out there. Yeah, no, that's interesting that you would say that, uh, just with that foresight I think it's that face, man. It's that it's that baby face, non-mustached face that we <laughs> talked about the other day on the show. Um, but we're glad you're with us. We're going to be talking about the Week 12 main slate. Uh, we just released a podcast on Wednesday talking about Thanksgiving Day slate, but this is what we normally talk about. And honestly, this is a really tough week because there are no buys. And we actually have another game now on the main slate when they added Steelers and Ravens. So there are a lot of different plays. And so it's really important this week when we talk about cash lineups, configurations, what you know specific tournaments to play, uh, that we all get on the same page. So we're excited you're here. We're going to talk about DFS for the rest of us, get into a little battle royale, and uh, get into some of our favorite games to stack. But let's talk about last week, week 11. Give me some of your thoughts, bets of how it worked out for you last week and just some general general overview. Yeah, overall, it was a, a pretty good slate for me. Um, came close to taking down a really big GPP, which was a ton of fun. Uh, I think I finished fifth in that one. It was over on FanDuel. On DK, in those 50-50s you and I play in, it, I was just, I was sick, man. I, I literally was like, you know, a point and a half away from cashing. Like, come on, one catch for five yards. That's all we need out of these receivers. And I, and I almost got there. So overall, it was a pretty net even week with the the big GPP performance. But that's why you play a little bit of, of both. Or, or maybe you're kind of more of a tournament player because you get those big wins and it balances you out. But my biggest takeaway from the entire slate was just, and I've had this weakness before in, in previous weeks where I've locked into a, a pass catcher that I absolutely fall in love with early in the week. And I just get, you know, tunnel vision and don't, for, you know, I forget to look at the other pass catcher. In this example, it was Adam Thielen, who I was just so dialed in on Dalvin Cook, on Justin Jefferson. And I was sleeping on on, on uh, Adam Thielen. And clearly that was a weakness. He went off for two touchdowns. He was the, the wide receiver you wanted in that matchup. So the process was correct to get to a Vikings pass catcher. Obviously, we did not select the correct one or I didn't select, select the right one. So that was a, a miss on me. But yeah, good slate overall and definitely looking forward to bouncing back here in, in week 12. And just to be just honest with everyone, week 11 was my worst week. And this is what I found. My two worst weeks that I've had so far uh, was when I was a part of a wedding. So I was I was a groomsman this past weekend. We had the rehearsal on Friday, wedding on Saturday. And, you know, I didn't even, Bets, we didn't get to text, man. And what did you do last weekend? <laughs> I almost forgot that you were at that wedding. But normally around like, I don't know, three o'clock in the afternoon on Saturdays, I I get a, a series of messages in our Slack channel from Kyle that, you know, his projected uh, ownership and, and kind of what to expect for the slate. And I was like, man, I haven't heard from Kyle in a while. Like, I hope he's all right. And then it dawned on me and I was like, oh, yeah, he's at that wedding. No wonder. And then I get a text from you the morning, the morning of the main slate. And you're like, uh, dude, I feel very unprepared right now. So, yes, I, it sounds like it showed on Sunday. <laughs> and we talk a lot about this where it's a process throughout the week. We give a first look article. Um, uh, we have a Vegas article that Betts does. You know, I kind of talk about who are some of the top matchups in terms of pace of play and wide receiver matchups. And, you know, I, I got all that work done. But Friday until, you know, Sunday, maybe around 10 a.m., like I was completely booked. And it was a great wedding. But I'll just say it led to a suboptimal play. I, I played a Hall of Famer. Let me put that down. I put a Hall of Famer in my lineup, 4K. Adrian Peterson completely busted. Um, <laughs> it was it was a it was a play where I was trying to fit in some more studs, so I just went went really low. So yeah, it wasn't a great week for me in terms of cash. Um, what's funny is that the original cash game lineup that I made had Deshaun Watson in it. I played in a couple of head to heads, and I forgot to change out those lineups. So my original cash game lineup hit 175. I felt great about it, but yeah, it was it was a it was a, a I took a bath. Let's put it that way. It, 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 it happens, man. It happens. We all have those weeks. But 
dude, week 12, like this is the week. Come on. This is the week. And and I think that's helpful for people to see, like you're not going to be profitable every week so far. In 11 weeks, I've cashed seven out of 11. So uh, that's, I would say that's pretty good. Like you want to hit 60% in fantasy football. I think most people from a prognostication standpoint don't understand that 60% is awesome in this field if you're hitting that in terms of your rankings. And so for DFS, if you can hit anywhere near 60 or 70, you're going to be super profitable. It doesn't always work out that way. But so far, the process worked well. And we've gotten some good feedback. One The other day, we got someone who messaged us and said, hey, first started listening to the uh, podcast. I was like, just give me straight picks. And over time, they bought into this process of looking at the top games, how do we stack them, and creating a process where you're not just taking someone's advice, but you're learning how to build lineups yourself. And so that's what we care about here. We also care about you guys joining the DFS Pass. twenty nine ninety nine. we talk about it every week, but we are still crazy for putting this half off, and we still have the rest of the playoffs. Like, I was looking at the schedule. I was like, man, we're at week 12. We're almost done. And I was like, no, we have the playoffs to also talk about as just another another chance. So this week for Thanksgiving, if you're like, oh, man, we have one less game. When we get to the playoffs, playoffs. Playoffs? Uh, you, Don't talk about playoffs. <laughs> Uh, that was Jim Mora, I believe, the Colts, Colts yes, coach. Yes, it was. I, I've used that, I use that quote every once in a while. No one in my family gets it. But uh, yeah, that's going to be an awesome chance for you guys to jump in and win some extra cash in the playoff time. So we're super excited about it. Anything else you want to say about the DFS pass this week? Because I know we had some special things with, with Thanksgiving and uh, our Vegas report. Yeah, things are a little different this week just with the timing. We're, you know, Kyle and I have from Monday to Wednesday, I've just been working around the clock, like literally, and you specifically staying up till what, like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. the other night for the Megalodon uh, show doc and show prep for for the guys on the on the, the flagship show. But yeah, man, I mean, it's just a great value. And you've got to give a shout out to our guys, Ben Cummins, uh, Rob Wozniak, of course, Jake Seeley. They, they put their their work into it. And they give you their top plays on the slate, which I use as a resource every week. So check it out. The Vegas report is up. If you're listening to this on Friday or Saturday, it should be up in the DFS pass. uh, Looking at the top games to stack. State of the main slate. I will say that, yes, I did stay up late. uh, 4.30 Eastern time yesterday to get that show doc ready. uh, Kyle, you're an animal. it, <laughs> an absolute I, animal. my body my body was prepared and i will say it was pretty fun going through all the matchups uh usually we do that over a span of three days and i had to do it in just one day so uh it was fun to be a part of it if you haven't checked out the megalodon episode i don't know what you're doing it's two hours plus long it's just awesome content it's you know it's just peak fantasy footballers and in a couple weeks we actually have our thousandth episode coming out on the main show so good times at fantasy footballers, but let's talk about this main slate and bets in terms of a strategy standpoint this week, I'm going to tell people it's a challenge. All right. It's a challenge because there are so many plays on it. There's so many teams because there's no buys because we're getting an extra one from Ravens and Steelers. Like this is pushing us back to like week one and and it's been a while. And so I, I think a lot of people have been used to the last couple of weeks, like, all right, well, There's two running backs to play. Guys, this week, there are so many people you can play, especially at quarterback. Let's start off there. At quarterback, you can play Kyler Murray. You can play Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, uh, Justin Herbert. Like Those studs are all there, and they all have pretty good matchups. Like Yeah, Mahomes plays the Bucs, but he's Mahomes. Like You can just lock him in. So at the top, there's a lot of great plays at quarterback, at, at running back. It's like you can play Dalvin if you want to, 9,500. It's a lot, but still some great plays. I know you're going to be talking about Derrick Henry later. He's he's your boy this week. Yes, sir. Um, J- Josh Jacobs, Alvin Kamara. Like, There's just so many different studs. At wide receiver, Hopkins is on there, Keenan Allen, Tyreek Hill. I mean, it's just this is a week where – you have to make some major stands on who you're going to fade because there's great plays across the board and you can't fit them all in. So any thoughts on just the slate as a whole and how you would approach it this week? Yeah, it is definitely a tricky slate. And sometimes it's kind of nice to have like all these options. But at other times too, it sort of gets overwhelming because you're like, man, there's so many great plays. Like I want to try to fit them all in and get exposure to different games. And one thing that I found successful over the years, especially in GPPs, 
is when you're looking at a game, at a slate, I should say, rather, that has a lot of intriguing games. Like, we're going to talk about, what, five games here that have... Are they all over 50 points on the, the over-under? I think they are. Yes. Yeah. So the only one that's coming in at 49 and a half that we'll talk about with the Cardinals and Patriots. But still, it, it's right there. So you're getting a ton of, of high equity, lots of fantasy point uh, performances here in these games. And I think sometimes people get ba- you know, bound down and like, oh, I got to play like a couple players from each of these. You can take a stance and say, like, what happens if, if this game goes wrong, for example, or that game goes wrong and just kind of go full game stack with one of these and and sort of fade an entire game. I've, I found that to be successful in the past. So it is a slate where I think that sets up well for us to do that. Obviously, picking the right place is, is a different story. And hopefully we can help you through that. But, um, man, I'm excited. And I think this is a week, too, where, like, if you're prepared, you kind of do your homework over the next couple of days. I don't know about you, but I feel like on the Thanksgiving week, like usually everyone is just so hyped for the Thursday games, myself included, that all of a sudden it gets to like Friday morning and people are like, oh, crap, I have two days to prepare for Sunday slate. So listeners, hopefully you're you know ahead of the field in that aspect. And I think you will be, obviously, with the DFS pass and this podcast. The roster percentages this week are going to be uh, much lower than they were. Like we've seen weeks before, remember when Aaron Jones was hitting 50 or 60 percent. There's no like Mike Davis cheat code this week. Like really you're going to have to just pick the players that you like best. And you know, there's a couple of people that stand out Dalvin cook. And we're not going to talk about that game, but at 9,500, like he's still the best play on the slate. He plays the Panthers who bleed points to the running back position. But yeah, I think ownership percentages, roster percentages are going to be much lower than you think. Uh, like I said, the, at the top, like with quarterbacks, those guys maybe will hit 10%, maybe, but there's some cheapies too that we'll talk about. And it starts in this first game Las Vegas Raiders, six and four, at my Atlanta Falcons, three and seven. The Raiders are three point road favorites. And this game is a 55 and a half point total. Uh, what I love about this game is that these are two dome teams that have terrible defenses, all right? Like Las Vegas is giving up the fourth most points per drive, the second most rushing TDs allowed which brings Todd Gurley into play. And then Atlanta, you know, all year we've been picking on them. They have the second most passing yards allowed, the most yards per play. And the biggest thing is just how the game script plays out because Las Vegas likes to play slow, their 30th in play in pace, while Atlanta plays up-tempo at 8th. So, Betts, why don't you start us out? How would you attack this game with the Raiders side? Yeah, on the Raiders side, I, th- I think you have to kind of, if you're going to play this game, you need to think about, Two different scenarios. One is, you know, the Raiders control the clock. They get out to a lead, and, and their favorites in this game, according to Vegas, is three point, um, three point road favorites. So, if there's a scenario that plays out where the Raiders win, and they win big, Josh Jacobs is going to get literally all the touches he can handle. Right in the games where the Raiders win, he's averaging almost 27 opportunities. When they lose, it's down to 17.8. So, you know, it really is game script dependent. So you need to think about the game script when you're we're building this, make a stance, see what you think about the game, and then go from there. So if the, the Raiders win, I'm going with Josh Jacobs and probably bring it back with someone in the passing game on the other side if I'm stacking this. And the other scenario, of course, if Derek Carr is the guy that comes out and smashes because they get down early and Matt Ryan has a great game. Derek Carr, man, $5,700 on DraftKings. Like, I was just going through kind of counting the quarterbacks. Like, you have to scroll to find him in the mix. He has priced $100 more than Gardner Minshew this week. Like, that's where we're at with Derek Carr on DraftKings. So, he's buried there. He's a great value if you want to save salary at quarterback. And like you talked about, like, we've picked on the Falcons secondary all year. That's not going to change, obviously, in this matchup. So, it's game script dependent for me in terms of how I go with the Raiders. But, Shout out to Derek Carr, man. He's playing the best football, I think, of his career, and no one's really talking about it, mostly because he had that death stare into the camera on, on Sunday Night Football, which was just hilarious with the eyeliner. Like, I I don't know what's up with Derek Carr, but he's playing good football, so shout out to him. And the stacking options are super easy here. It's like, do you want to go with Nelson Aguilar, who's super cheap on both sides? DK is 4,900, FanDuel 5,200, where he's even better play. Uh you know, he had 88 yards and a touchdown last week. He's he's their wide receiver one, uh, which we want rugs to be a thing. And maybe, you know, like a, as a dart throw in a really large field, you can do that. But Atlanta's allowing the most 20 plus yard completions in the NFL. And that's an Aguilar thing. Like I will say watching their game this past week, watching that Sunday night game, I like there's a couple of times where I was on, I was thinking to myself, 
that guy looks good. Who is that? That's Aguilar. <laughs> is there something like he has flashes? He did when he was in Philly. Um, and then he'll super disappoint you. So you messaged me your when we talked about him as a cash game play. It's like it could be there. He could also just completely bomb. So is that how yeah. you feel? Yeah, you sent me your cash lineup and it had Nelson Aguilar in it with the price. And I was like, man, he's so cheap. Like, what a great cash play. <laughs> and then in my head, I was like, but at the same time, like, you know, like two for 18 yards is coming at some point for Nelson Aguilar. So I'm I'm playing around with lineups. I've had a couple where he's in there and it, it looks good. But I think I need to think about other options first before I lock in Aguilar. But still a fine play. He's cheap. He doesn't you know, he doesn't need to hit the ceiling to get there. Right. Especially on FanDuel, like at fifty two hundred dollars. That is so, so cheap. We don't need him to do much at that price tag. So if you were looking to save salary, he's great this week. And you can stack with Darren Waller if you want. I prefer him on DraftKings at 6000 Normally, we don't you know, say to pay up for tight end, but the, this guy has a 28.5% target share. So think of him as a wide receiver that you're getting to play. Uh, I also think this is just crazy, but if you're stacking this game, and let's say you punt the tight end somewhere else, then if you want to flex Darren Waller, that's not the craziest thing that you could do, considering that Atlanta's the worst against the tight end position. So Darren Waller is a great play. But on this Atlanta side, who would you want to run it back with? Yeah, man, I think we got to talk about Calvin Ridley. And, you know, I want to talk about Julio Jones at some point, and I want to talk about the the what if scenario of when he plays. But, you know, we're recording this on Wednesday night. We're not really sure what he's going to do. But Kyle, I can tell you with 100% confidence, like he's not He's not himself right now, right? Obviously, he was in and out of the game all week last last week with the hamstring injury. We know how tricky those are, and we know Julio's dealt with those early in the season. So that's kind of a what's a combination of yellow and red? It's like a yellow reddish flag, something in between. Orange? Is that right? I think that is the in the color scheme uh, <laughs> what people would say. But Julio's tempting at sixty five hundred. Like that's he is. That's like crazy that he's in that territory. But yeah, with the game time decision, you can't really trust him. Right. So he's he's tough. But if he's out, I mean, Calvin Ridley is going to get so much volume. He's a smash play without Julio Jones th- for three weeks earlier in the season. He saw target counts of 10, 13 and 10 in those games. And last week, you know, he was coming off the injury. I kind of talked about it on the on the injury blitz. I was like, I'm not really sure what to expect from Calvin Ridley. Maybe monitor expectations. No, he came out. He played the highest snap percentage of the entire season since week three coming off of a Liz Frank injury. So he looks fine. He looks good. I'm firing him up. And if I'm building a Derek Carr stack, to me, he is by far and away the, the top run it back option on the Falcon side of the ball. Hayden Hurst is 3,900 on DraftKings. That's pretty cheap. So if Julio's out, then I think Hurst is in play just to higher volume but uh i want to talk about todd Gurley really quickly and then you can finish up if you want to talk about matt ryan but Gurley is someone that we've talked about on this podcast when we brought up the falcons that were like i just don't see a ceiling i don't trust him that much he is way down there on DraftKings. like they have they have really lowered his price at 5500 i don't trust him in cash but this guy is getting red zone looks more than almost anybody in the league uh, the Raiders are allowing the highest percentage of opponent running back targets in the NFL. So I just think that he's there for tournaments, but he is scary. Like there are weeks where Brian Hill gets way more work than you want. So I, I Gurley's an interesting name. He's almost probably a better real life player than a fantasy player. Like in a redraft league, like I think Gurley's a, a fine play this week, like mid range kind of RB two, but for DFS, he's just a tournament play, but what do you think about Ryan? Can you play him on DraftKings where we, we talk about a lot? He's a value. Can you play him this week? He's he's a great price this week, specifically on DraftKings. $5,900 obviously is well below where he was. I think last week he was 62 or 6300 So he's dropping. But, you know, man, in the games without Julio this year, we've just seen the, the floor just, you know, bottoms out. Quarterback 25, quarterback 28, and quarterback 25 in those games without Julio. And if you play him in DFS, like your lineup's pretty much dead in the water unless you hit the absolute nuts with your running back or wide receiver. So it's tough, man. I, you know, if Julio's out, I, I'm not playing Matt Ryan. There's no way. If Julio's in and we know that he's not 100%, maybe he's more of a decoy. He gets a touchdown, like it elevates Ryan a little bit. I'm not that excited about Ryan this week and, and probably won't play him, to be honest with you, especially not in cash. Like I, I can't trust him in cash. If you want to pivot as a really, I think he's going to be like, you know, sub 10%. In tournaments, if you want to play him there, that's fine. But it's just those splits, man, without Julio are are drastic. 
All right, let's go with our Vegas pick. And for me, it really does depend on Julio. If Julio plays, I will take the Falcons plus three. I'm going to take the Las Vegas Raiders minus three regardless. I mean, they're this is a good team. Like they are, they're actually a good team, which is shocking to say. So I will take them over the Falcons who, Kyle, I got to tell you, man, spoiler alert, they are not a good team. I will agree with you. And it's like when you get punched in the stomach, which I know doesn't happen all the time, but I just, I just felt that I <laughs> absorbed the blow and it's like on The Office where Michael takes that punch from Dwight, but then he gets a second one. I was waiting for the second punch, but I, I absorbed ex- your blow. I know exactly what you're referencing, which is phenomenal. <laughs> Perfect. So let's talk about this next game. And I'm just going to be very clear. This is my favorite game on the slate. I love these teams. And here's the, I just need to come out and say this. I love the Chargers. I, I am yes. a huge fanboy of the Chargers. And I also realized that that says something about my mental state that my two favorite teams in the league are the Falcons and the Chargers, <laughs> basically teams <laughs> that know how to lose uh, in one score games. Like that's that's their MO. That's what they're all about. Uh, Chargers are three and seven. They visit the Bills who are seven and three. The Bills are five and a half point home favorites. And this game has a 53 point over under. What I love about this game is we have two young QBs, Justin Herbert, Josh Allen, that are not afraid to throw it downfield. That is gold for fantasy. Like the last thing we want is a quarterback that is, you know, just going to game manage or is willing to just, you know what, it's third down. Let's not really force the ball. Like I'm okay with turnovers for my quarterback as long as he keeps chucking it deep. So this game also is a pace up spot where Buffalo has the six most plays per game and the Chargers have the third most. So I love this spot in just a second. We'll get to talk about my favorite player on the entire slate uh, in just a second. But Betts, where do you want to start this game? Yeah, I think first let's talk about the game environment. I mean, you talked about it with the pace. Like, I'm kind of confused by this total. I, I would expect it to come in closer to like, I don't know, 55 and a half, 56, something. And it's been climbing. So it started all lower and it's it's going up, which we've talked about in the past. Smart people that study the NFL, that put their hard-earned money and lots of it on these games, like Kyle over here, um, those are the the guys that move the lines and this line is moving <laughs> higher and higher and higher towards the over. So we want to jump on board as fantasy players, as DFS players. We want this game. So this is definitely going to be my favorite game stack, but I'm going to just going to kick it back to you. I wanted to give that note and then kick it back to you because you're wearing a Jersey. You've got a background right now uh, of a certain player. Talk to me about this man. I want first, I'd love to be a person that moves the lines one day. Like that's when you know <laughs> you've made it. Hey, I, that, I threw like, down a couple- bet on there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, uh, I threw down a $10 bet with my friend. Did that move anything? Um, so I, I have to talk about Keenan Allen. So if you listen to this show, if you read any of our content, Keenan Allen, Julio Jones are my two favorite players in the league by far. Love Keenan Allen. I am wearing right now the Chargers alternate kind of Navy jersey, which bets oh. told me they're going to they're gonna play in them this week. Dude, it looks good. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It looks good. My background right now on Zoom is Keenan Allen in his full beard. I am literally recording right this in there. basically <laughs> in this guy's bearded. Like I'm with his chin right now. So we're close. Let's put Can't it that confirm. way. But here's the deal with Keenan Allen. Um, he's on pace, just a ridiculous pace. Uh, his price still isn't high enough. It's 8000 on DraftKings. It's only 8200 on FanDuel. He's a PPR machine. He leads the league in targets and receptions. But here's the best part. His matchup this week is against the Bills slot cornerback, Teron Johnson, who's allowing the most yards in the league in slot coverage. So this is a dream spot in a pace up place like where I just love that the Bills are going to force the Chargers to keep doing what, what they do. And Herbert loves Keenan Allen. I just I think he's a smash play this week, especially on, I love him on DraftKings because every time he gets a catch, you're like point point like last week he saw his career high in receptions he saw 19 targets Keenan Allen is the man and he's somebody that I'm locking in cash game lineups so anything else you want to say about arguably the best slot receiver in the game what is there to say man you said it all he's he's a phenomenal play this week absolutely love him for sure with Justin Herbert though you know if we're sticking on the side of the ball if you're going with Keenan Allen in a tournament 
Justin Herbert is going to be popular. People are buying in. They've seen it for five weeks straight. Like he's a stud. He's playing so well. And obviously Keenan Allen is the best play in this game, in my opinion, on both sides of the ball. But again, I want to refer to my weakness from last week where I was just so locked in on Justin Jefferson. Like, don't forget about Mike Williams, who is, you know, our, I'm going to point this out. It's one of my biases. I love Mike Williams. I played him in showdown against the Saints. I think it was like week four, week five, took down a huge GPP, like love the dude. But this is the uh, shootout. Like this is game is perfect. He's probably going to see more Travis White than Keenan Allen. And, you know, we talked about that with DK Metcalf and what happened. DK Metcalf came out and smoked him. Mike Williams is a good wide receiver. I'm not saying he's DK Metcalf, but he can still win. And so I think if you're building Justin Herbert stacks and you want to throw Keenan in there, like I would encourage people to go with a double stack, go with Mike Williams, because I think Justin Herbert, he's playing out of his mind. The Bills, man, this is not the defense that we've seen over the last decade. They are bad this year. And I think this is a game where Justin Herbert's going to come out and absolutely um, set this game on fire. And I, and I want all the pieces attached to him. So, yes, I'm in on the pass catchers. Do you prefer Herbert or Josh Allen, who's a little bit more expensive uh, and you get a little bit more rushing upside with Josh Allen? Uh I don't know. I feel like both of these are great plays this week, but who would you prefer in a cash game lineup? Oh, it's absolutely Justin Herbert. No question about it. And I'm concerned about Josh Allen, not necessarily as far as like, is he okay this week? And will he get there? He probably will, but we just need to think about his ceiling too. So, you know, in cash, we talk about floor mostly, but we still want to have the ability for those guys to get there in terms of, of the overall ceiling that they have. And obviously in tournaments that matters way more, but you know, Josh Allen with John Brown in the lineup has been, way worse. His performances are way worse. He's 1.52 more yards per pass attempt when John Brown is in there. He's averaging almost nine more fantasy points per game when John Brown plays. And John Brown is coming off a high ankle sprain. Now, again, we're recording this on Wednesday. He didn't practice today. So we'll see throughout the week what happens, but I'm not projecting him to play. And so our listeners definitely need to be mindful of that, that it really does lower the ceiling for Josh Allen if John Brown isn't out there. And it's worth noting too, you know, Buffalo wide receivers, they're seeing 75%, 75% of the team's targets. That is the highest in the NFL by a wide margin. So if there's no John Brown, Stefan Diggs, oh my goodness. Yeah, Diggs is second in the league in targets and receptions. He's someone we played a lot in cash this year. And just to give context to how much the Bills are throwing to their wide receivers, that is the highest percentage of a team's targets over the last six years. I started tracking those numbers. Like Josh Allen is specifically saying, I'm throwing to those guys because he's not throwing to Dawson Knox. He's really not throwing much to Zach Moss or Devin Singletary. And the crazy part is that the Bills are running three wide on 95% of their plays. So that is the highest in the league. That is an insane total. Like we talked about the Cardinals last year, the Rams a couple years ago, like they are setting a new standard of what it means to run three wide. So Stefan Diggs is a smash play. Let's say Brown is out because he didn't practice on Wednesday. What do you think about Cole Beasley? He balled out right before the bye. He's a great PPR option. Do you want to play him maybe in a tournament? Like if you were double stacking this game, let's say you're going the Bills side and you went with Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, Cole Beasley, and ran it back with Keenan Allen. Are you willing to go there? Yeah, I am for sure. I mean, we think need to think about too the accumulative roster percentage in our lineups. You know, we talk about it. You can play some chalk plays, it's fine, but just pick it different elsewhere. And so if you want Justin Herbert and you want Keenan Allen, just know so does everyone else, right? So you're gonna have to get different elsewhere. So maybe if you're going that route, you say, Okay, I'm gonna go with those two chargers and I'm gonna bring it back with someone on the bills. The you know, the the play that everyone wants to do is Stefan Diggs. So you can get different and go with, with Cole Beasley. I, I think it's a great play. He's 5,500 on DraftKings, which it's kind of that range where we talk about people get kind of lost in the shuffle. So yes, for sure. I think he's a, an interesting tournament play. Let's talk about Kalen Balaj because I'm ignoring the Bills running backs. I'm not going to play Zach Moss, not going to play Devin Singletary. Why is Kalen Balaj only 5,500 on FanDuel? They didn't adjust this. Although Austin Eckler is eligible to come back, we're not expecting him to play this week. And it's crazy to think about this guy. He's a pass catcher now. He had nine targets this last week. Is this the same guy that we saw in the past that was just fumbling and bumbling all of his targets? What do you think about Kalen Balaj? Yeah, man. I mean, I don't know what to tell you guys. Like on FanDuel, he's essentially that free square. Like $5,500 is, 
I don't even know what to say. I'm, I'm shocked that that's, that's actually a real thing. It is. I mean, he's seeing, what, 18 opportunities, then 24, then 25 over the last three weeks. If you're getting a running back on FanDuel at sub 6K with that volume, you play him. I mean, that's the rule. In, in cash, you play him. So I'm going there in my cash lineups on FanDuel. Um, I mean, man, the, the Bills, they cannot stop anyone on the ground game. They're allowing the highest rush success rate in the NFL, in the entire league, and the third most 10-plus yard runs. So yeah, man, sign me up on FanDuel. It's just too cheap. If you need pivots in this game, if you say, hey, everyone's going to run at Keenan Allen because he's, well, awesome. Uh, Mike Williams is probably going to see more of Tredavious White coverage, but he's always a threat. Jalen Guyton is only 3,100 and he's seeing a ton of deep targets. So maybe he breaks off a long one. And then I'll also mention, uh, as they call him on the regular podcast, uh, Hunter Henry. Uh, on the main show, uh, Bills have surrendered league highs in catches and yards to the tight ends, and I think he's in play. I just never clicked the button for Hunter Henry because of his ceiling. I think it's capped because you see all the targets go elsewhere, but those are great pivots in this game, or if you want to double stack with Justin Herbert, I do not mind. So any last thoughts, or you want to give me your Vegas pick? No, I think we covered it. I will give you the, the pick, and for me, I'm going over. Yep, I'll go over as well. 53 is too low, like you said. And I mean, I could see this game hit 60 plus. Like it's it's there and this is going to be a fun one to watch. Let's go to an AFC South battle. We actually saw this two weeks ago on Thursday night, if you remember. It's the Tennessee Titans 7-3 at the Colts 7-3. So the winner of this game takes control of the AFC South. And I want to bring this up. Indy's O-line. Like here's the here's the crazy part about Indianapolis. Like Philip Rivers is not being sacked at all and Tennessee doesn't rush the quarterback very well. But the Colts are so bent on running the ball like they have the ninth highest rush rate, but they're actually not that successful. It's kind of like, you know, you have someone who thinks they're really good at a certain sport, like maybe a friend in high school and you're like, "Dude, you aren't good at basketball. Like you don't need to keep doing this. You're not going to make the team." I feel like Frank Reich is basically saying, let's keep running in the back of our awesome offensive linemen. They just haven't been that successful. They're 26 in rush success rate. So I think that's something to keep in mind when we're looking at this game. Like the Colts want to slow things down and they want to run the ball while the Titans have a pretty up-tempo pace. So we just think about that in terms of game script. But I know that you want to start by talking about Derrick Henry. So have at it. He's the king, man. King Henry. What is there to say? We we talk about it every year, and it's kind of funny, and it's it's a bit, right? It's like, oh, yeah, when it gets cold out, like, Derrick Henry gets better. And in November, he's better than when he is in October. And December is his month. But, like, it's it's real. Like, if you look at his game logs, like, it is real. And, Kyle, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I live in Vermont, as, as people may know. We got snow last night. We got about two inches of snow before Thanksgiving. I mean, if there's ever a rule, like, when it snows, you play Derrick Henry. Now, this game is not played in Vermont, clearly, but that is a sign to me, and I'm taking it. I'm running with it. Derek that is Henry, some man. deep, deep uh, intel that you will yes. only find on this podcast. Absolutely. People aren't going to know that. They live in California. Um, but, man, like on FanDuel, $8,300 to me, I think he should be more expensive. He's seen 18-plus touches in every single game this season, like so safe, and we know the upside, right? We know it's there. We saw it last week, and, man, he's had nine touchdowns in, in his last eight games, like what is there to say? He's he's a, a lock for 15 to 20 touches, maybe even more. And, you know, we've talked about this situation, too. And I remember we talked about it a couple weeks ago. I wrote about it in the, the, the showdown preview. Like, he has roasted this Colts defense in his career. So I'm all in on, on Derrick Henry. To me, he's one of the best GPP plays on the entire slate. I am looking at him and definitely will be uh, above the, the field in terms of the roster percentage on Derrick Henry. Yeah, he went 19 for 103 against them just two weeks ago. And honestly, like that felt like it was a bad game. Like him getting to 100 was like, all right, he's kind of struggling his way. Like, I, I think you're right. He's he's ready to erupt. And this Colts team is tough. Like, I'll have to give it to them. Like, I didn't think with Phillip Rivers, they're going to be able to get there. But seven and three, I think they're a solid team. But in terms of DFS, there's not a ton of plays that I love on their side. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr., is kind of the name that's popped up the last two weeks. He's only 5,000 on DraftKings and 5,700 on FanDuel. Uh, I think he's someone that you can at least put in your tournaments if you think they're going to get there. Phillip Rivers has 18 plus fantasy points in four of his last five games. So 
He's more of a medium projection. I just don't see him getting there. Uh, But let me talk about Ryan Tannehill. All right, this guy has been super efficient. He's just over the last couple of weeks kind of slowed down. And Tannehill has a 22 to 4 touchdown to interception ratio. And I feel like no one's going to want to play him. So in tournaments, I think you can say, I'm going to fade Henry and play Tannehill. Or you're going to say to yourself, I'm going to go Tannehill, Henry, and then pick one of the pass catchers. And that is a way to get very different from a lot of people. Because I feel like Tannehill is going to come in under 5%. Like, he's just not going to be a popular play this week. So, in terms of stacking this game, like I said, Tannehill, Henry, and then maybe A.J. Brown or Corey Davis, and then Pittman on the other side, I think is a great way to do it. Uh, So, what do you think about how I would want to stack that game? Yeah, I think that sounds good. I mean, the only thing I I think that's tricky about the Tannehill-Henry stack, right, is just... He doesn't target him. And and I don't know why. Like it's the most egregious thing I think in the NFL that Derrick Henry, like he's literally unstoppable on screen passes. Like no one can stop him in the open field. I don't understand why they don't throw him at least three a game. And if they did, we would be probably retired from playing DFS, Kyle, honestly. Um, but man, it, it's tough. So it that's that's a, a situation where you're just trying to get a different roster construction. So I see what you're saying there for sure. I don't personally love it i'm just being honest with you man i just i don't love it um, i hate you too <laughs> yeah exactly and then on the Colts side of the ball like it's tough because ty hilton is dust and like, you don't really want to trust the tight end so i think michael Pittman is certainly the, the play but i want to ask you like what are we doing with, with jonathan taylor and and really the, the running backs on that side of the ball because just two weeks ago on a primetime game on thursday night football we saw naheem hines come out and basically win the game like if you played him in, in showdown you probably want a lot of money. So are people back to Naheem Hines? Or are we back on Jonathan Taylor who saw, what, 26 opportunities last week? Like what, what should people do with the Colts backfield? Yeah, that week I was on Hines. So I, I had a pretty good week in showdown. But for me, in terms of because this field is so big, because we have so many games, I'm not projecting either of those players to have a week winning game. Like I, and, and so for the most part, I will be staying away. I do like uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas's price on FanDuel where he's 6,400. I just can't bank on the fact that I know which one is going to be the workhorse. Uh, He saw 26 opportunities last week, which is healthy. Like that's what you want from your running back. So I don't mind him on FanDuel where, you know, that's kind of more his skill set. And then Hines on DK. So if you want to take a stab in tournaments, go for it. But I don't really trust them in cash. Yeah, I think that's probably about right. Any other thoughts? Let's talk about these wide receivers on the Titans side. A.J. Brown, nobody can tackle him. Like if you saw last week, he just bullied his way into the end zone. And then I feel like Corey Davis is being disrespected by a lot of people, including myself, where this guy has the eighth most receiving yards over the last month. He went five for 113 last week. Corey Davis and A.J. Brown, do you want them in your tournaments? I think they're really interesting tournament plays and it's mostly because, you know, people are are kind of thinking the way I am, right? Like Derrick Henry is coming out and he's going to be a great player this week. But like we've talked about, what happens if Derrick Henry goes, you know, 17 carries for 85 yards, like 8.5 yards or 8.5 points, excuse me, doesn't, it's not going to help. Like it doesn't matter at all. He needs to find the end zone. So if there's a, a game script that happens where they need to throw the ball, like Corey Davis, like literally is going to be like 2% rostered in GPPs. AJ Brown probably going to come in sub 10% because you see the matchup. It's scary, all that stuff. So these guys are, are certainly risky plays in cash. I'm not going to go there by any means, but I do think, you know, especially AJ Brown, like really intriguing tournament play. He's just a good football player. I don't even know how else to put it, but he can win in tough matchups as we've seen. And so you need to kind of talk about uh, if, or think about, I should say, like if you if you see a scenario where Derrick Henry fails, does AJ Brown get there? And I think the answer is potentially yes. He's averaging 70 yards a game, so I feel like that right there is enough of a floor to be able to say, like, I've seen a ceiling before, uh, but I think you can get some pretty good production from him. He didn't practice on Wednesday, but that's pretty normal A.J. Brown. Like, I feel like he's turning into Julio Jones, where they're just crazy physical specimens, and they get banged up, and they end up playing. And when they play, they're great. So... Love A.J. Brown. He's only 6,700, which is a little bit lower than he was last week uh, against the Ravens. So how would you stack this game up? 
Yeah, to me, I'm looking at a mini stack. The ideal scenario for me, I'm going with my boy Derrick Henry this week, and then a bring back on the other side is Michael Pittman Jr. I like that play a lot. Yeah, I think that's the best way to attack this game as well. Like I said, Tannehill, the pass catcher is the way to get kind of contrarian for a really large field GPP. But other than that, that's what I want to do. And I will take Tennessee and three and a half. I feel like two weeks ago that they that game was in their hands. And then the second half, they just, I don't know what happened. Like they just didn't show up in the second half. But I, I like the Titans to cover. Yep, I'm with you, man. Plus three and a half. All right, we got two more games here. We're going to do this next one. Arizona Cardinals at the New England Patriots. And I think before the season, if you would have told me the Cardinals would be in Foxborough as favorites, I would have thought you were a little crazy. But here we are. Uh, Cardinals are two-point road favorites, 49.5 total. And we have two quarterbacks that love to rush the ball. Kyler Murray has 10 rushing touchdowns. Newton has nine so that brings them into play for for DFS where you get a lot on the ground and their ceilings are just immense. Like let's say they throw for two touchdowns and run for another. Like that's getting you 30 plus points right there for your quarterback. So Kyler Murray's been incredible all the year, but in terms of the pace, like it's very clear what New England wants to do. They're 31st in pace when leading and they're number one in rush rate. Like they want to run the ball over and over and over again. So on the New England side, what do we do with Cam, and does that eat into wanting to play Damien Harris or James White? It's tricky, right? Because Rex, Bur- Rex Burkhead's out. He tore his ACL, which is unfortunate. I do expect Sonny Michelle to be back on the active roster, but that doesn't change a lot for us, right? Like, Sonny Michelle, man, he's done. He's not He's not a thing anymore. Damien Harris has looked absolutely fantastic when given the opportunity. So, on the FanDuel, where his skill set is, fits perfectly. He doesn't catch passes. It doesn't matter on FanDuel. As long as he finds the end zone and puts up a decent day on the ground, he can get there. And at $6,000 on FanDuel, to me, he is very, very much in play. I like him a lot uh, in this matchup. And then as far as uh, James White, you know, it's it's tough. I, I can't click the button on him. There's just, on a slate like this, where there's no bye weeks, there's just so many options. Like, I probably won't do it. But on FanDuel, I am pretty excited about Damian Harris. Yeah, the crazy part about Harris is he only has one rushing attempt inside the five. Like that's not, that's just not getting me excited to to play somebody great. like that. That's not going to do it, Bob. So, yeah, I'm not loving that. On the Cardinals side, the thing about Hopkins and Murray is they're both expensive. Like if you're going to stack those guys in a tournament, you're eating up almost a third of your cost and. I don't love that given the matchup. Like Stefan Gilmore has already said, like I'm going to shadow DeAndre Hopkins and not like he can't like Gilmore hasn't been incredible this year by any means. Uh, but yeah. What do you think about Hopkins? I think you're being kind to Gilmore, man. I mean, I love the guy. Like he's been great, but to be honest, he's been bad this year. He really has not been good. He's allowing 67% completion percentage when targeted 10 yards per target and 15 yards per reception. Like, we saw it with, with um, a couple of wide receivers already that faced Gilmore. He had a knee injury a couple weeks ago that he's coming off of. So, like, I'm not that scared about the matchup. I know it, it kind of on paper looks scary. And I do think DeAndre Hopkins is a great GPP play this week because he is expensive. People are going to struggle to get there if they want to play guys like Derrick Henry or Alvin Kamara or Dalvin Cook. It, it's tough to get to, to DeAndre Hopkins. And so... To me, that says, all right, if I go cheaper at running back, DeAndre Hopkins is in my lineup, and I think he's set up here to succeed. He's kind of been disappointing in recent weeks, right? Like a big game is coming from DeAndre Hopkins sooner or later, and, and this could be the week. Um, you talked about it. you know. I, I know you put that post out on Twitter, uh, what, a week ago or two weeks ago, just talking about how bad this New England defense is. People don't realize it has been so bad on a, on a per-play basis. So I'm not scared of the matchup. I, I certainly want some exposure to DeAndre Hopkins this week. You're right. GPP is where you'd want to play him just because you're going to have to pay up. And I just feel like you can get players with a similar median projection as Hopkins. Like, of course, he can be the wide receiver one any single week. But uh, yeah. And then in terms of this game, I just see the game script of New England. Yes, they're four and six, but they know how to control the clock. And I feel like they'll be able to do that against Arizona. Um, I'll just give you a spoiler alert. I don't think this game is going to hit 50 points. I just, I I see, I just see, you know, here's the thing about Kyler and Cliff Kingsbury offense. Like they sometimes get too cute 
And that stalls drives. They don't convert third downs. They last year you saw it like we're in the red zone. They weren't that great. And so I guess it, this is me saying I trust Bill Belichick. Uh, I don't know. Are you in a similar vein? Yeah, I definitely th- think the game script goes that way. Like I, I for sure think this total is a bit high. Um, and the other thing to consider too, like we haven't even talked about it with Kyler Murray is he's still dealing with that mild AC joint injury. Now I fully expect him to play, but it matters for a quarterback. Obviously it's a throwing athlete. And so to me, if you're, if you're going with Kyler, it's more of a contrarian type of play in a game where we know probably the game environment isn't ideal. And so to me, this game is strictly a GPP only game in every single position player, every quarterback running back wide receiver. That's where, that's why I'm attacking this game is GPP. So I just want to put it out there for people. But before I move on from Kyler, I do want to point out one thing about this new England defense, Russell Wilson, finishes the quarterback four. Lamar Jackson finishes the quarterback seven. Deshaun Watson finishes the quarterback one in the last couple of weeks. Kyle, are you sensing a trend with these quarterbacks? Apparently, they've been killing the Pats. They have been killing the Pats. They all can run the football. And the linebacking core from New England is not going to be able to keep up with Kyler. So I think if you're looking at him, like he's even a sneaky GPP like one-off play this week that not a lot of people are going to go to. So I just want to point that out with Kyler. I do think he's in play in tournaments, but not paying up for him this week in cash. You're saying you could play him naked. You can play him naked. You could be naked. You could play him naked. You could do whatever you want naked. Don't tweet at Kyler and tell him that. Hey man, by the way, <laughs> I played you naked on DFS man this week. Uh, that would, that would just be weird, but yeah, that would be weird. <laughs> I feel like Kyler and Hopkins is the type of play that I would do in our DK tournament. Uh, where it's like, all right, here's a good, great GPP play, and and then I play it, and uh, and they ball out. So, yeah, I they're just so expensive. I cannot get there in cash game lineups because of that price. And then the running backs on the Cardinals side, Drake and Edmonds. I love Edmonds. I think he's just a fun player. Uh, he's RB twenty on the season, and he's just efficient when getting limited opportunities, but. Unless you're saying the Cardinals are going to fall behind by a ton, I don't see the Patriots just running up the score. I don't think he's a great play. And then Drake, yeah, he's fine. He's fine. But in this game environment, I don't really want to play him. So anything else on this game that you want to touch on? No, I don't think so. I think we covered most of it. I just want to say one other thing that's kind of sneaky. Again, GPP, large field, like you, you have to kind of go for an off the wall play. I think Jacoby Myers is, is sort of interesting. I think people are going to be off of him this week after he was just chalk last week. And we see that a lot of people in DFS are like, oh, I'm not going back to that guy. He burnt me last week. Like, no way. And Jacoby Myers, it's kind of interesting. Like his price went up, especially on, on DK. But you know, not including last week, we only saw three targets in the previous weeks, six, 10, 14, seven targets and slot wide receivers have absolutely killed the Cardinals like Tyler Lockett. That's when he had his 200 yard game and three touchdowns. Jameson Crowder, eight for 116 and one Cole Beasley, 109 yards and one and one touchdown. So yeah, man, I, I think Jacoby Myers is a really sneaky play. Yeah. So in this game, what you're doing is you're picking a quarterback. So one of these rushing quarterbacks and then pairing them with a wide receiver. You don't want to play them with a running back because these guys have so much touchdown equity on the ground. And then you want to bring it back with someone else. So if you want to do Kyler and Hopkins or Kyler and Christian Kirk, maybe bring it back with Damien Harris because you're saying the Patriots are going to get a lead. And on the Patriots side, you're doing Cam and Jacoby Myers and then maybe bring it back with Hopkins uh, as a more expensive play in this one. So give me your Vegas pick. Yeah, it's tough. I think the the line opened at two and a half or three, I want to say, favored with the Cardinals, but it has been bet down to two. And so we're, because we're not at that key number of three, I'm going to take the Cardinals here, minus two. I'm going to take the Patriots at home. I just trust Bill Belichick, and maybe that'll change. Maybe I just need to realize this is not the same team, but I trust him in terms of scheming against Kyler. All right, last game, and this is the game that people will be talking about the most by far because what we have in front of us is the GOAT versus a really old quarterback who can't complete deep passes. Yes, Patrick Mahomes is basically going to be the GOAT probably. Would you say that these two are going to go down as the greatest quarterbacks ever? I know this is kind of non-DFS question, but what do you think? Well, I mean, Tom, like you can't argue against it, obviously, with what he's done. He's there. What Pat, Pat Mahomes has done in the first couple of years of his career is just 
lights out. I, I think I think we could see that for sure, man. I, I think we could. This is a game we'll be talking about our grandkids because we'll say, you know what? We won the Millionaire Maker on this game because <laughs> we talked about it on the Week 12 DFS podcast. Kansas City Chiefs, 9-1 and one at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 7-4. and four. This game is a 56-point over-under. That is... What we like to see, and the Chiefs are three and a half point road favorites. So where do you want to start in this one? We got to start with Pat Mahomes, man. I, I, I think, you know, it sounds silly for us to be like, hey guys, he's a great play this week. But I do want to give people the extra nudge to play him. And, and here's why. Tampa Bay on the season has looked really good against quarterbacks. And they've get, you know, they're getting after quarterbacks, they're pressuring him, all that stuff. But I love the stream finder tool on, on the website for the jointhefoot.com supporters because you can look at, okay, what is happening on the season and then what's happening in the last three weeks, last five weeks, you can change it based off what you want to look at. But over the last three weeks, there has not been a defense that has allowed more fantasy points to quarterbacks than Tampa Bay. Oh my gosh, Pat Mahomes is coming to town. He is going to light them on fire this week. So to me, man, I'm paying up if I can to get to Pat Mahomes in tournaments. He's going to come out and I think smash the Tampa Bay Bucks. And and this game has like massive, massive shootout appeal to it. So I love Pat Mahomes this week. And certainly, you know, you guys know who to stack him with, right? Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, et cetera. Like, yes, please sign me up. Yeah, this is one of those games where if you're stacking it, there's a lot of different options and you can kind of get lost. Like when you look at the Bucks side, you're like, there's three wide receivers. Which one am I going to pick? And when you look at their running backs, like, is it Ronald Jones? Is it Leonard Fournette? There's just so many different options. I will say this. Ronald Jones is a sneaky GPP play. Kansas City's allowing the third highest rush success rate, second highest yards before contact, and the fifth most rushing yards per game. So in some way, maybe the Buccaneers get the lead early. And I think they would just sit on Ronald Jones and they'd sit on running the ball. Don't forget these Chiefs, they're nine and one, but they haven't boat raced every single team. Like a couple of weeks ago, remember against the Panthers, like they fell behind at home and they had to come back. So there is a scenario where the Buccaneers get ahead and then your Chiefs side is getting there because you have Mahomes, you're pairing him with Tyreek or Travis Kelsey. And yes, it's a bit more expensive, but I do think that is a, a way where this game could lean. Uh, but what other scenarios are you seeing? Yeah, for sure. I like that call a lot. And Ronald Jones is $6,500 on FanDuel. He's a much better value over there. So if you're going to play him, I think that's the place to do it. Um, and then looking at, you know, what if that doesn't happen? Like, what if for some reason they can't run the ball or, you know, Bruce Arians can't make up his, his mind who's going to run the football for him? One week it's Hunter Fournette, then it's Ronald Jones. And you just say, you know what? I don't even want to build a lineup around that narrative because it's so frustrating. Um, speaking from uh, experience, uh, then you can look at the pass catchers on on the the Tampa side, right? Like we just saw Derek Carr come out, Nelson Aguilar, Darren Waller just go nuts on this defense last week, and I think we can see that again with with Tom Brady. Obviously, guys, like th these pass catchers, you don't need us to tell you that they're good plays. Mike Evans has been lights out all season, finds the end zone almost every week. Chris Godwin, he is the the second best wide receiver cornerback matchup according to PFF and then Antonio Brown man, I just don't know what it is about it like they love each other he lives in his house with Tom Brady like I don't know what it is but Chris Goblin and Antonio Brown are running their routes in the areas of the field in the short to intermediate passing game where Tom lives and we talked about it. he can't throw the ball deep he has literally like a zero percent completion percentage over the past several weeks of deep passes so if he's going to win it's with those two guys in my opinion and so i do want to have some exposure to godwin to antonio brown this week the hardest part about these receivers is they're all priced around the same area so godwin is my favorite play at six thousand because of that matchup uh evans is 6100 antonio brown's 5700 so in a tournament i think one of those three receivers is going to get there uh, if you're going to stack this game. And so it's just figuring out who the right one is. So if you're going to do Mahomes and Tyreek on the other side, who's expensive, then these guys are more like that middle tier. That means you're probably going to have to punt somewhere at either tight end or wide receivers to fit these in your lineups. But I think they're great plays here. And Godwin is the one that I like. Just he's getting those slot targets. But I will say this, Mike Evans is playing 41% of his snaps in the slot. It's the highest of his career we don't need to forget about that. Like this guy is, was supposed to just be gone. Like once Godwin was back from injury, once Antonio Brown came 
into the fold. Like we were going to say, all right, Mike Evans, he's done. He's, he's washed. Like he's been solid each week. Like he's been there. It's just, this is the game environment where, you know, you look at 56 points and you say, that's the highest on the slate. Could they go to 65 points? Like, I think that's in play, but would you stack them with Brady? Like, is Brady someone you're thinking about this week? Yeah, I think I am. I think he's going to be a really uh, interesting type of play because there's a lot of of people that are going to want to play Justin Herbert, a lot of people that want to play Pat Mahomes, and obviously Kyler. Like, there is a, a scenario that exists where Tom Brady in your tournaments comes in at like five percent, and you're like, "Whoa, I did not see that coming." That's awesome. And with a guy like Tom who spreads the ball out a ton. To me, he is a must double stack quarterback. If you're playing him in a tournament, you have to play two pass catchers with him. I have a rule set for that for this week. Just given that, you know, look at last week, right? Like every one of these wide receivers went off. So you don't want to miss out on extra um, touchdown upside, extra yardage, all those sort of things. So for me, if I'm playing Tom, which I will play him in a couple lineups, I want two of his pass catchers. Brady leads the league in pass attempts inside the red zone. That's what you want in a quarterback, especially because he doesn't run the ball that you're hoping he throws it to Gronk or one of those wide receivers inside the 20 and they get in the end zone. What about CH? I know this Bucks run defense is elite. They were allowing the lowest yards before contact to opposing running backs. So any interest in CH? It's tough. Probably not. You know, he definitely could get there for sure. And the way he's going to get there, honestly, is through the air. But this team is still using Le'Veon Bell. And we talked about it, you know, with just them allowing so many points to quarterbacks. Like to me, if I'm going with Pat Mahomes or I'm going with a bring back, it'll be probably a wide receiver or the tight end in Travis Kelsey. So not a ton of interest for me this week and, and definitely not in cash. I'll just say for this game, like I love it for tournaments for cash. I probably will stay away because the Kansas City side is pretty expensive. Like if you wanted to play one of those guys in cash because they have basically a 30 point Team implied total, I get it, but Bucks is a GPP only play, and uh, so that's probably where I'm going to go. But give me your Vegas pick. This one's tough, man. I th- I think I think I'm going to lay the points with the Chiefs, which I wish it wasn't three and a half. Typically, we like to get that number at three, but I'm still going to go with the Chiefs here. We've seen Tom Brady have some blow up spots where it's just like, dude, what are you doing? And Pat Mahomes is Pat Mahomes. I'm with you. I know you're about to lay about 10 G's on this game bet. So I'm with you. Let's go with the oh, Chiefs. For sure, dude. For sure. <laughs> hey, honey, by the way, um, <laughs> I know I'm not really a better. I kind of play DFS and I, I write, but um, we're not going to be, be able to pay the bills because <laughs> yeah. Tom Brady heard us talk about him and we called Mahomes the goat. So, um, honey, it is what it is. DFS Battle Royale. All right, so the Battle Royale this week is on DraftKings, and the goal of this is kind of to go back and forth, and we're going to give you some plays that we would say are pretty great for cash. So these are a lot of a lot of these are cash, and then uh, maybe some ones that we would stack with in tournaments. But uh, right now, bets you're only one point ahead of me, so I've made a little bit of a comeback the last couple of weeks. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Give me a stacking quarterback under six thousand that you would use. Well, Kyle, my friend, you are going to be down several points when I send in the car this week. I wish we had that drop queued up. We don't, unfortunately, but I'm sending in the car. Listen, man, the Falcons, like what is there to say? (laughs) They're not a good team. And we have plenty of, of, you know, like past history to tell us, play your quarterback against the Falcons and good things will happen. Stack them with Aguilar, stack them with um, Darren Waller, as we said. So, yes, give me give me Derek Carr. I'll throw out Ryan Tannehill at 5,800. He's $100 cheaper than Drew Brees, who will not be playing for a couple more weeks. Uh, Here's the deal with Tannehill. He's efficient, and I like him as a low rostered play in tournaments where he's going to be able to get there as leverage against Derrick Henry. I think Henry is a much better play. Like, trust me for for cash and, and for most part, but I think Tannehill can get there against the Colts. All right, give me a cash game running back, not named Dalvin Cook or Alvin Kamara. So those are the two that everyone's going to be talking about for the most part, but give me a cash game guy. Dude, uh, I do not understand DraftKings this week. This is like laughable, in my opinion. Kareem Hunt is priced as the RB21 
one on DraftKings. And guess who he plays this week? It is the Jacksonville Jaguars. I mean, Gio Bernard is, is more expensive. Miles Gaskin is more expensive. He's on IR. Kalen Balazs is more expensive. Latavius Murray is more expensive. I do not understand what's happening. Alexander Madison is more expensive than Kareem Hunt. I, I don't understand. You have to play him this week. $5,600 to me is just the best play on the slate. Whoever set that price at DraftKings, um, I don't despise you or your family, but I do despise your decision-making because if you look at Kareem Hunt, he was 6700 last week. So he, there's an $1,100 drop for no reason, really. I mean, same player, and honestly, he's been better with Hunt. So he is in my cash game lineup as well. I love that play. I will mention one Wayne Gallman Jr., the Gallstones. If you have them, you should play this guy. <laughs> At only five thousand, yes, five thousand for Wayne Gallman. Gallstones. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's an all-timer there, Kyle. <laughs> you know, he this guy is not the sexiest of names, but Wayne Gallman. Get this: over his last four games played, he was on bye last week. But his last four games, he's the RB three in total points, and nobody's talking about this guy. The Giants are going to be favorited over the Bengals, and I just think they're going to give him the rock. So he's been double-digit points, uh, sitting around 16 points per game, and he gets he's involved in the passing game. So I don't mind Wayne Gallman as a cash game play at 5,000. Saves you some quiche. Right now, my cash game running backs are Dalvin Cook, Kareem Hunt, and Wayne Gallman. So I feel like that trifecta is, uh, is pretty solid this week. All right, give me a cheap wide receiver. Woo! You went real cheap. I did. I wanted to give our, our listeners a salary saving option this week. And on DraftKings at $3,500, Denzel Mims is certainly in play. Now, I'm going to put this with a caveat. I don't think we know for sure who's starting a quarterback as of Wednesday. But assuming it's Joe Flacco, I'm in on Denzel Mims. He's just so cheap. And you know his price doesn't reflect what he did last week. He drew a couple of pass interference penalties down the field and obviously if one of those hits like we're talking about him as a completely different type of play this week we saw Brashad Perryman get the long touchdown and he's kind of been the deep threat but Denzel Mims has looked pretty good on tape he's also uh, I think sneakily like has an underlying upside in his production that we haven't seen in the box score quite yet you know I like to track those stats where like guys get PIs and tackle at the one yard line he fits the bill this week I think we see a good game here from Denzel Mims I love that play. A lot of times people don't punt their wide receiver in cash, uh, but we recommend like it, maybe punt a tight end or a wide receiver because you have to play so many of those. Uh, I looked this up. Flacco leads the league in percentage of deep targets. So 19% of his attempts are 20 plus yards down the field. And then Denzel Mims has the second highest air yard share in the league in terms of his team. So this dude's getting the targets we want. And at 3,500 bets, like, I don't know how many points, like if you got seven points, maybe eight points, would you, would you be happy in cash? I would love that in cash. Yeah. Give me eight points. That's all we need. We need him to two X his salary. And honestly, like he's a guy that I think he could even like three X for sure. Cause he's just getting down the field. So yeah, man, he's just so cheap that we don't need much from him. Are you telling me that he could get 11 points, maybe 12 <laughs> points? Okay. Don't get crazy, Kyle. Don't get crazy. 10. Yes. 11. Don't No. Come on. No, now, this could. next <laughs> this next guy, I could not tell you how many points he can get because it is like, is it 25 or is it like 2.5? That is Nelson Aguilar at 4,900. He is tempting because of the price and because of the upside against the Atlanta Falcons pass defense. So if you're stacking Derek Carr, I think he's a great play, uh, but you are going to pull your hair out if he doesn't come through for you. So give me a punt tight end. All right, dude, I'm going with Jordan Reed. Yes, I'm going with Jordan Reed. The, the, I'm putting my confidence in Jordan Reed, which I've never done in fantasy because of how often he is injured and has burned us in the past. But it's one week. We need to stay healthy for one week, and I think he can. He is coming back in a lineup that has Brandon Ayuk still on the COVID IR list. We're not sure if Debo Samuel is going to play. We're still not sure if Raheem Mostert is back this week, Tevin Coleman. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. There is no one else that can catch the football for the San Francisco 49ers this week at $3,600. I think he's cheap enough that we can consider him a punt. We don't need him to do too much. But the thing that's encouraging about him is that when he's in there, they're saying, all right, this is a play where you're going to run her out in the end zone. We're going to throw it to you. So like we know when he's in the game, he's going to get targets. So I will take Jordan Reed at $3,600. 
All right, I'm going big time here. I'm going for Mo Alley Cox. Yes, Gigantor, $2,700 on DraftKings. I get it. The Colts have three tight ends. You're not really sure which one it is, but Cox is leading them in snaps the last couple of weeks. And the dude is out there to run routes. He's an athlete. And here's the deal about the Titans is they do give it up to the tight end position. We saw Mark Andrews tear them up last week. They're a 27th against fantasy tight ends. So Mo Ali Cox is a major cash saver at 2,700. And if you look at his game logs, you can say to yourself, all right, this guy can easily 2X. It's not that hard for him to do it. So I don't mind Gigantor. All right, give me a DST. I'm going to take the Chiefs, which, you know, at $2,600, like it kind of sounds silly to be like, why would you play a defense in a game that's probably going to go to 60 points? Like, aren't they going to get scored on a lot? Yeah, they probably will. But we've also seen from Tom Brady blow up games where you're like, dude, are, are you the same quarterback that just won all those Super Bowls or are you just like totally done? And we've seen other, the other side where he just comes out and absolutely smashes. But at that price, the opportunity for turnovers for how much I project Tom Brady to have to throw the football in this game, you want an opportunity for your defense to have pick sixes, sacks and all this sort of thing. So I think with how often Tom's going to drop back, I mean... Kyle, I think you're more mobile at this stage of Tom's career in the pocket. So there is opportunity for us to get sacks and and turnovers from Tom Brady here this week. I appreciate that compliment because it gave me the moment to share about my uh, B-League flag football title in uh, my sophomore year of college. Uh, Team Shifty Pants. Yeah. (laughs) Shifty Uh, Pants. I love that. Shifty Pants. I I was the quarterback. So uh, we run a pretty conservative offense. I I actually, I didn't turn the ball over a lot, but uh, we won the championship. So I felt pretty, pretty good about myself and my mobile (laughs) ability. Kyle's walking around campus, like his chest all puffed out. Like no big deal. You guys see that game last night? (laughs) B-League. B-League title. Did you go to the field? Did you see me? Um, (laughs) That was fun though. And I'll just say this about defense this week, because there are so many teams at, at play right now. I love the Chiefs as a tournament play. You really can't go wrong. If you look at just the way that teams are priced, there is the teams way up there, like the Steelers. The Saints are a great play at 3,800 on DraftKings. Uh, the Rams, 3,700. The Giants, like at the very top, there are some great plays. And then the middle tier, I don't really like anyone. So in terms of cash, like you're saying, do I want a really high floor with these defenses, knowing they're super volatile? Or do you want to just say, I'm going to punt? And guys, I am punting with hold, hold your beer, hold whatever you're doing right now. Uh, if you're going to the bathroom, you know, like I usually say, like if you are on a run, I'm going to talk about the Jets as a, as a play in DFS this week because they're 2100. They are at home against the Dolphins who are not a very scary offense. Like I'm not worried. This is more of a, of a cash saver. Let's say you get five points from your DST in cash. I think you'll be fine. Uh, I will probably never mention the Jets again on this podcast. So yeah, they let's, have. Let's just make that a one-time thing. Okay. <laughs> Although you know I did talk about Denzel Mims. So <laughs> do we need to talk about Chris Herndon? Uh, we might have to. This is a week. He caught a touchdown last week, and that's it. That's that's all we'll mention. So, bets. Any final thoughts? Week twelve that you want to give the people. Yeah, real quick, I did just get an update, a sleeper update on my phone that as of Wednesday, Todd Gurley did not practice. Now, I only bring this up as a reminder to folks about the knee issues that he's had in the past. We talked about the game, but that changes things a lot, obviously, if he's not out there or if he's limited in any capacity. And it is also worth mentioning, too, last week played a season low 37% of the snap. So I'm not saying that's why or it matters, but just think about that as, as far as how the week progresses for Todd Gurley. That's kind of a, a yellow flag for me in terms of why he just all of a sudden wasn't on the field last week. So monitor Todd Gurley. But outside of that, play Derrick Henry. It's going to be a great week. I can't wait. Hopefully you guys all had a great Thanksgiving, and I'm excited for the Week 12 slate. Yeah, and if, if Gurley is out, let's just say he is, uh, Brian Hill, 4K, is going to be a popular cash saver just because of how bad the Raiders are. So... Yeah, we're excited that you guys are with us. Excited that you guys are listening to the content. We're learning the game together. We have the highs. We have the lows. So hope you guys have had a great Thanksgiving and you wish some cash this weekend. Go Jets. 
you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers DFS Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com.